Joining us now is Kieran Martin, the head of the new National Cyber Security Centre that's being opened today by the Queen. Big day for you today. Very exciting, I'm sure. But do we really need a centre like this for security? Or is it as much about saying to the rest of the world, the UK is a fortress, bring your business here, it's safe, operate here, it's safe. Something we really need post-Brexit, don't we? Well, it is a really exciting day, and, and thanks for having me on to talk about it. This really matters because we're living in one of the most digitally advanced societies in the world. And that's brilliant. It's full of opportunities, economic and social opportunities, but it only works if we keep it safe. And our job is to keep the UK as the safest place to live on work and work online. Yes, there are threats, but there's so much we can do to make us safer online. And our job at the centre, part of GCHQ, a world-class intelligence agency with some of the best technologists in the world, is to put that at the disposal of the UK's cyber defences. Isn't the trouble, though, that, you know, with all the will in the world, all the, you know, technology experts that you've got working for you, at the end of the day, sometimes this comes down to one person clicking on a link in one email. How can you tackle that? If it's someone in a government department, if it's someone working at a council office? So one of the most important things we can do is to get away from being defeatist about this. There really are some very exciting things we can do and we're doing them at the centre. Let me give you one example. You mentioned clicking on a link. Many of us, maybe uh, you and me, will have had emails from people pretending to be the taxman. People love to, criminals love to spoof the taxman because it's an easy way to attract people into thinking that they're going to get money. We've developed some really simple code and we've published the code so anyone who owns a, an internet address can, can use it. We've worked with Revenue and Customs, they've used it. Last year they blocked 300 million attempts at people pretending to be Revenue and Customs. And the really important thing about that is instead of relying on you and me not to click on a link, which people say, well, are you going to click on a dodgy link? Well, how do you know if a link is dodgy? Those emails didn't arrive. You didn't have to make that choice. So at the National Cybersecurity Centre, we want to do more and more of that sort of technological development to keep us safer automatically. You call it defeatist, though, but isn't it being realistic? I mean, you said that, you know, about 60 significant attacks a, a month are thwarted. A lot of people say that you're actually underestimating that. With the sheer avalanche of numbers, isn't it likely that one day one of these significant ones is going to work? Well, of course, some attacks are going to get through it, but our job is to make sure they do as little harm as possible and that we can test the space. Mm. We go after adversaries, we build in protections into our key systems, which means we're making it as hard as possible to attack us. And even if you're good enough to get through and attack us, you're going to have a very tough job achieving the sort of impact that you're trying to do. So what are we talking about? We're talking about 188 thwarted attempts in the last three months. Give us a sense of what they are. Are we talking about thwarted terrorist cyber attacks? Are we talking about financial attacks on individuals like Charles and I? You know, what are we talking about? And what is potentially most dangerous? You know, is it consistently robbing us or is it that one attack that might cause physical harm? Well, you've covered most of it in, in the question. It's not so much um, cyber terrorism at this point in time. I think the two things we worry about most, one is that big significant what we would call a category one mm. cyber attack, that sort of national emergency and we've not had one on that scale in the UK. Other countries have had, uh, other allied countries, similar countries in the US and Germany for example have had what we would call category one attacks. We expect there will be one given the severity of the threat and I'm not talking down the, the threat, the threats are very real but I think you've also touched on a really important point which is that there are hundreds of thousands of daily criminal attacks on, on you and me, people trying to steal our data, trying to get at our money and taken together while each and, one of the, each and every one of those attacks is not significant in itself, they add up to a risk to our economic prosperity. And we've got to talk about Russia because you know in the lead up to the 2015 general election here, an attempt by Russian hackers was thwarted. We know, of course, that uh, in the US, they're investigating their Russian activity concerning the election. Just overnight, Michael Flynn, the uh, security advisor there, has resigned as a consequence of his contacts with Russia. What's the threat from Russia to, to our situation here in the UK at the moment? Well, we've seen over the past two years a significant increase in the threat in cyberspace from Russia against the West. That's focused broadly on two areas. One is on critical services, on the sort of critical infrastructure on which we depend, and the other is on political and democratic systems. We've not had the same sort of attacks in the UK that we've had uh, in other countries, but the threat is very real and we're working very hard to combat it. And as I say, there is plenty we can do to reduce the risk and reduce the harm from that sort of attack.
So you've got the Queen coming today. Do we know if she's comfortable with internet use? I'd love to know what her password is. It's, you'd have to be very cheeky to try and hack the Queen, wouldn't it's you? It's not like Corgi123 or oh, something. It could be. You could have given it all it away could now. Be. Windsor 6 or something. <laughs> well, maybe we'll see a bit later. But we'll, be, we'll have plenty of uh, very useful and very promising technology to show her and the Duke later on this morning.